In this video, we will demonstrate how to conduct a gene knockout experiment in primary T cells with help from Invitrogen Neon Next electroporation system. The first step is to design the experiment and order the required reagents via the free Invitrogen True Design Genome Editor software. For today's experiment, select Gene Knockout. Select the species of cells, in this case human, and then search for the gene of interest, in this case PDCD1. Next, you will pick the transcript of the gene you wish to target. You then need to select the type of knockout edit you wish to perform. Today we will use Frameshift Indels. True Design gives you the option to use pre-designed gRNAs that will target the first exon of a gene, or custom gRNAs that require you to use the gene navigator to select the specific nucleotide site you wish to target. Today, we'll choose pre-designed synthetic gRNAs. Clicking Next initiates True Design's algorithm, which will scan the desired edit site region for all protospacer adjacent motifs, or PAM sequences, it will then rank the recommended gRNAs for performance and specificity and filter out those with poor off-target prediction. If the site you are targeting lacks a PAM for CRISPR, True Design will design talons to target the desired edit site. Clicking the off-target number gives you a list of the possible off-target editing sites. However, just because an off-target is listed, it does not guarantee this edit will occur, especially if your gRNA has a high performance score. Overall, a gRNA with a high score and a low off-target number is ideal. True Design will add green check marks to the top gRNAs it has identified. We recommend trying two or three gRNAs for each gene target you are editing. Clicking on each gRNA will show you where it lines up with the site of interest. With the PAM site highlighted in the purple box, simply select the gRNAs you wish to use via the checkboxes. Clicking Next will take you to a summary page of the reagents you will need for your experiment. Simply select or deselect what you need via the checkboxes and use the drop-down menus to choose the amounts. Lastly, the software includes the option to add positive and negative control gRNAs for your experiment. These verified gRNAs are great for optimizing your experiments for a new cell type. For today's experiment, we will need gRNAs, TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9 protein, GCD primers, and positive or negative control gRNAs. Click the Download Designs and Protocols button for a summary document of everything needed for your experiment, then click the Add to Cart button and all selected reagents will be ready for ordering. Once your reagents arrive in the lab, unbox them immediately and store them according to the package labelling. Prior to the experiment, purified primary inactivated T cells were isolated from peripheral blood mononuclear cells PBMCs. The cells were then activated with Invitrogen, Dynabeads, Human T Expander, CD3, CD28 beads. After 72 hours on the day of electroporation, the activation beads were removed with a magnet. Healthy activated cells will be densely packed into the activation beads.
Today, we will use a 24-well plate to plate our cells after transfection. After isolating the activated T-cells from the magnetic beads, cells are plated into optimizer T-cell expansion medium and placed in an incubator at 37 degrees C. For this experiment, TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9 GRNAs, controlled GRNAs, negative controlled GRNAs, the Invitrogen Neon Next, Neon Next R buffer, and 10 microliter neon tips are needed. First, your GRNA needs to be resuspended in TE buffer to a concentration of 100 micromoles and stored at minus 20 degrees C. Then, prepare your RMP complexes. For a 24 well plate, we recommend mixing 1.5 microliters of TrueCut Hi-Fi Cas9 with 300 nanograms of each respected GRNA and 6 microliters of resuspension buffer R in a fresh RNAs free microcentrifuge tube. Mix the contents gently and set aside for 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature while you prepare your cells. If you are performing a knock-in, mix 10 picomoles of your DNA donor with your RMP complexes. We recommend 200,000 viable cells per reaction for T-cells. Gently spin down 2 million cells, remove supernatant and resuspend the pellet in 50 microliters of resuspension buffer R. Mix 5 microliters of cells with the 6 microliters of each RMP complex. The increase in volume will help to prevent the bubble formation in the Neon Next pipette tip. The Neon Next electroporation system should now be set up. Add 2 milliliters of electrolytic buffer to the sterile Neon Next tube and insert it into the pipette station. Load your experiment from Thermo Fisher Transfection Lab or use the quick run function. For T cells, we recommend using 1600 volts, 10 milliseconds and 3 pulses. Using the Neon Next pipette and 10 microliter Neon Next tips, gently mix your cell and RMP complex mixture. Load the tip by pipetting slowly to help prevent bubbles from forming. Check the tip carefully for any bubbles. If you see one, gently pipette the solution back into its tube and then load the tip again slowly. If bubbles keep forming, try a new tip. Carefully load the pipette with your loaded tip into the pipette station. Once the Neon Next verifies that there are no errors or bubbles, press the electroporate button. After confirmation of a successful electroporation, carefully remove the pipette from the station and dispense your cells into a well of your pre-warmed plate. Move the vessel in several quick side-to-side -side motions to disperse the cells across the surface of the vessel. Electroporate all samples using a new pipette tip each time. To avoid contamination, do not use tubes more than 12 times. Change the tube and buffer when switching different payload or cell type. At 24 and 72 hours post-transfection, cells should be assessed for toxicity. Key things to look out for include cell stress, death and contamination. If cells look stressed, refreshing the media can help them to recover. To validate the success of the PDCD1 knockout, flow cytometry can be performed this involves collecting, washing and incubating the cells with antibodies for PDCD1. For each transfection sample, add 200 microliters of T-cell and 5 microliters of PE anti-human PDCD1 antibody to a 1.5 milliliter tube or a 96 well plate with 100 to 180 microliters of sample. Incubate the plate for 20 minutes at room temperature and shielded from light. Wash the cells with PBS and gently spin the cells down. Discard the supernatant carefully and resuspend the cells in 500 microliters of PBS. Run your samples on a cytometer to quantify the percentage of PDCD1 negative cells compared to the control cells. Other forms of validation include genomic cleavage detection, or GCD, Sanger, and next-generation sequencing. You can also characterize your T-cells post-editing by performing a killing assay. If you're interested in learning more about designing CRISPR gene editing experiments, be sure to check out the other videos in the series and reach out to your local Thermo Fisher technical specialist.